The Ocean Tipping Points project is one of my favorite projects because it brings together all of the data that's been collected by everybody through time in our coral reefs around Hawaii. It's been very difficult to gather that information, to answer questions, to know what's been done here before, to reduce duplication of effort, to answer larger questions, to identify resilience and tipping points out on the reef. Places that are in danger of tipping, those are the places where we really need to redouble our efforts. So this project has really been able to emphasize where places are doing well, where places could use better management, and where places are just not doing well, and we really need to think about how much energy we should put into them to trying to rehabilitate them. The first step was to get an understanding of, of how the reefs were looking underwater. And then, of course, comes the, the research that tees out what environmental uh, stressors and human stressors are responsible for the occurrence of the different state of the reefs you're looking. The relationship that the project has built uh, with the Department of Land and Natural Resources and in particular the Division of Aquatic Resources is a very important one because ultimately you need an uptake pathway. This is not science for science sake, it's directly meant to benefit the end users of reefs. A big part of our role has been directly interfacing with the managers um, and trying to figure out that once we know these thresholds in, and we don't want to cross them, but what are the best ways to avoid not crossing them? What drivers should we be mitigating? Where should we be mitigating and how? I think what's really clear is there's a lot of information. This Tipping Point project is compiling that and that's the kind of collaborations between different um, areas of expertise, to pull things together, develop the models, whatever it may be. When you're looking at you know, resilience indicators, I haven't really seen something that provides the level of information and insight that this project has been able to capture. And I think increasingly we're going to be needing that and relying on it to look at where we prioritize managing for things like climate change. Um, and I think that'll be really important, especially given it's something that's happening globally, but we still are responsible for acting on it locally. So we now have a, a really comprehensive spatial map of how the natural environment is fluctuating, how human activities fluctuate, and how reef communities are responding to that. And never before has that really been compiled. So this data set is, is going to be publicly available, and this data set will be, will be useful for all sorts of other research. You know, it was really interesting to hear from members of local communities in Hawaii that they are also really grateful and eager to get their hands on these data sets that will help them gain perspective of how their community, how their bay fits into the bigger picture. And they're ready and interested in creating solutions together with the managers, with the scientists. And the way I see this data is that it's supporting what the communities have said, because the communities have been really strong advocates for standing up and saying, our place is changing, we want to manage it. But I think this data can just step in and support. It's providing us a baseline. Some is even providing us change over time to say, not only do we have the community saying this, but we have science saying this. That should be enough evidence for all of us to start acting on.